Golf Buddies, hello and welcome to another Friday on the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. It's felt quite a long week despite all the positivity. Um, yeah, been a very positive sort of a week. Um, just having an end of the week chat with you to round things off before we start again on Monday and hopefully get out and about this weekend. And maybe even remember to take my camera if I can uh, get up in time. <sighs> Sorry guys. Anyway, before we get on, remember, this is all for you. Keeps me busy, but it's all to entertain you in the scheme of things. So guys, if you enjoy these videos, please, please, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a Bowls buddy, and apparently a lot of you that are watching aren't, please hit the subscribe button it's absolutely free of charge it costs nothing and don't forget to hit that notification bell for notifications of new content on the channel and finally please as a favor to me share these with all your friends share them on social media there's an awful lot on this channel that can keep an avid crown green bowler entertained when they can't get out and about on the green so thank you i've got that out of the way so first thing i'm going to talk about trying to keep the positivity going uh, last night thursday um josh Mordew, that young whipper snapper uh son of chris put out a post on facebook advertising the mel edmondson memorial event uh at ribblesdale wonders to take place in may 2021 nothing unusual like that 64 spaces went inside 20 minutes which is pretty good going um, it just shows that people are desperate for competitive bowling um, great effort on Josh's part just to think about running a competition next year um, it wouldn't be on my my mind at all at the moment but they've uh, the fingers crossed they are hoping to be able to play bowls competitively in May. Um, no reason why they shouldn't be able to as long as everything um, is done correctly and we follow the protocols. So fantastic effort from Josh. Apparently he's got a lengthy um, reserve list of which I am one of those. Um, and he'd like everyone to pay their entry fees by January the 31st I'm hoping some of them don't so I can get in but there you go that's selfish isn't it uh, so brilliant well done Josh um, fantastic positive news uh, people are still wanting to play the game which is absolutely fantastic the next thing on my list is I got a little bit of I'm gonna need my glasses because I'm blind hello um, got this sent through yesterday and I'm just gonna read it um, it's fairly self-explanatory and you may be able to help don't feel bad if you can't um, the Huddersfield Junior Crown Green Bowling Association have been offered up to five thousand pound in match it funding from one community I'm asking for our bowling community to come together and donate to junior bowling. Whatever you donate, one community will match it up to a total of £5,000. An individual donating £5 means we receive £10. A club donating £50 gives us £100. An association donating £100 means we receive a whopping £200. You can, of course, donate whatever you like, and any donation will be gratefully received. And then there's a just giving link that I will post in the um, description of the video below. Now, that has come from uh, Jeff Martin, who has done an amazing, amazing amount of work for Junior Bowls in the Huddersfield area. And it could easily deserve some sort of uh, national recognition, an MBE or whatever. Uh, for all the work he's done and I think the uh, if you look at the bowlers who have come through Huddersfield uh, the young lads that have come through he's done an excellent job so guys again 
if you've got a, a few pounds spare anything that you donate will be doubled and that is an amazing uh, amazing opportunity for uh, an association that is well known and well able to bring young bowlers through to carry on their really really good work Whew, got through that uh, yeah so if you can link will be in the description um, and give what you can or if you can't give please share share the news share the the video with uh, with all the information on and hopefully people will be able to give a little bit fantastic so that was that now I had an, a very very interesting uh, message um, on on Facebook from Tony Chester's and you may remember Tony um, very good crown green player won a lot of mixed pairs with his misses I think if I'm correct uh, from the crew area crew area yeah crew area so he, he sent me a message regarding top families uh, that play bowls and he's, I'll just read it out. I'll read out what he said. Top families playing bowls. In the mid Cheshire area from Winsford, Glyn and Barry Cookson both played for Cheshire and won plenty of open comps. Glyn has a son Simon who has played for Cheshire. Barry has a grandson Owen who has won the Cheshire Junior Merit. Very good. The Cookson's are on the list. I think Glynn's and Barry's dad were was a pretty good player as well. I can't remember his name. Oh. Um, over in Crew, the Mori family. Dad Dave has won plenty of local comps. He has three sons: Sean, who has won the Potteries Merit and played for Potteries. The middle son Stephen has won the Cheshire Merit and won the Junior Waterloo and lost in the final of the Waterloo and won a number of other comps. The third brother plays league bowls. Dave has a brother Paul who won comps in the Crew area. So there you go, it sounds like the Morris have got a massive family and they could put out a team of their own. Um, I was thinking about this the other day, my dad said to me, maybe we're a, we're a bowling dynasty. And I said, well, I don't think so, not unless some of the plates have been smashed. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I could go on forever naming families. I mean, you do tend to get... Uh, sons following dads and all that sort of business but yeah, the Cookson's is a great shout as are the Morris and uh, thank you for uh, thank you for that Tony oh, God, I'm getting mixed up right I'm going to have a look at the comments from the videos uh, I'm not going to read all of them because there's quite a lot I'm going to go back to not going to go back as far as that okay Joe Carr my favourite on episode 6 of Talking Bulls posh areas for greens into croquet clubs over 30 years ago Coronation Park in Radcliffe was turned into one don't know if it still is I've been out of town for 12 years I can't imagine them playing croquet in Radcliffe maybe Maybe if they played it on the back of motorbikes and things like that, and just hit each other with the uh, with the mallets, but fair enough. Croquet in Radcliffe. Wow. Mark had said, if you remember last time, he sent a, a, a comment in, and he's thanking me for my responses regarding competition bowlers. Have they thought of offering matches to bet on, which includes live streaming? The fact flat green players offer this through whatever website that is. They offer live streaming on Mondays and Tuesdays most weeks and the betting firms price up the games along with in-play bets as well. Maybe the company that runs the GBP, uh, GPB service could be approached to include Crown Green as well. <clears throat> well, Mark, the whole idea of um, in-bet, in-betting play and bet fair and all that sort of thing was basically came from the panel professional bowling that's how it works they the odds change every end and you can win lose whatever um the problem that crown green bowls has got when it comes to these sorts of things is twofold really one indoor bowls is played indoor 
Crown Green Bowls is open to the elements and games can results of games can be determined by the weather as well as the bowling. And secondly, all you need for streaming a live uh, flat green game indoors are two cameras, one at each end of the rink. Crown Green isn't as simple to film. Um, I think when we, I was working with Globe Gig for the for the streaming we did with uh, for British Crown Green and Waterloo and what have you, we had five cameras. Um, one of those was a, was a roving camera, and the rest were fixed in in positions. And even then, you could argue we could have done with a couple more, really, maybe one very high up and one anyway. The point I'm making is it's not as easy to film a game of Crown Green Bowls on a outdoor um, outdoor green, and that is always going to be the problem. The, the technology is there to do it, but it's the difficult level of difficulty in filming it, unfortunately. Um, whether it's up to a, a group of Crown Green Bowlers to do it themselves, or British Crown Green, or the panel could do it, or I don't know. I don't know, but I, I honestly don't think that the the betting company would be particularly interested because of the difficulties in uh, in streaming it. I that's that that's what's come. It isn't the first time it's been mentioned. Um, I mean, it is possible, I guess, to do it with one person walking round the green, but it ain't as good as having two fixed cameras with you know clear view of things so I think that would, would be the, the thing that holds uh, holds that idea back but a good idea and one that I think that we could have got somewhere with during the first lockdown um, but thanks for watching Mark and thank you for, for commenting uh, lots of comments on the Bowlers World um, episode that I did and everyone's saying oh yeah we used to get the Bowlers World we used to look forward to it this that and the other and I think the ball as well was just, um, it was the wrong thing at the wrong time. Uh, the internet was coming in, so people knew results almost instantly. They didn't want to wait for the ball as well to read about it because they already knew. So the ball as well was already out of date. Um, once, even when it came through your letterbox, it was already old news, unfortunately. And... I, I did write for the ball as well for the last maybe two years of its life and give a few insights on competition bowling and this, that and the other. And I, I, I've put the all the um, all the little pieces that I did that is on the Bowlers World Archive on Facebook. So again, if you want to join, I've, I've approved maybe another 50 members for that. If there's any more of you want to join and you can read all those, uh, please feel free. If I remember, I'll put the link down below. And when um, when when it finished, I think from memory they needed something like a thousand subscribers to make to break even. And they were down to maybe below nine hundred people buying the paper. Uh, and when you think there's eighty thousand bowlers out there, and however many bowls clubs, you would have thought that at least every bowls club would have bought the paper. But they didn't and what generally happened is one person would buy it and about 50 people would read it so it was a, a shame and again just lost out to technology i guess but shame but anyway i'll get back to the comments most are saying fantastic well done uh including my pal michael Opie. now then michael Opie. if any of you out there are interested in getting some coaching during the off season I cannot recommend Michael Opie. Uh, I cannot recommend. Yeah, I can recommend. <laughs> Don't know where we're going with that. Michael Opie is absolutely the man for the job. He has coaching qualifications in other sports. I think football is one of them, and he carries that over into bowls. Um, a good player in his own right, he won plenty, played for the county, knows what he's talking about and he knows what he's looking for. So if you 
need some individual one-to-one -one coaching the tips I've given you aren't enough the people at the clubs who might be giving you uh, giving you a bit of advice isn't enough get in touch with Michael Opie uh, and he will put you right he might charge you a few quid but he's well worth it again uh, probably the best thing is if you want want his number get in touch with me leave a comment for me send me an email however and I will pass your uh, his details on to you and you can uh, contact him I cannot recommend him enough that's what I was gonna say I cannot recommend him enough um, nice lad as well very patient um, very patient very good very professional so little plug for Michael uh, if you need any coaching he's the man for the job okay right back to the comments um, okay Joe Carr again for, again trying to get this as positive as possible the Talbot I believe is being played at Leighton Institute next year according to my mate Nick Hopwood presume Joe Barlow will be running it but not sure on that that will be July 2021 all being well so that's again some amazing news not only is a green coming back in Leighton Institute they're also going to be running the Talbot trophy on there not 100% confirmed but fingers crossed fingers crossed it all does um, what else what else here we go Gerald O'Shaughnessy again uh, fantastic news Andy Waterloo next year in the 80s we had family holidays in Blackpool for one week just to watch bowling looking forward to next year and it you have made my day well that's what people used to do it, it was an absolute mecca for bowls fans and if you look on some of the old videos on here um, there's there's pieces where Colin Wellen goes into the crowd and he's interviewing a woman from somewhere oh, Mel, uh, Leamington Spa the home of flat green bowling and she came came up to watch the Crown Green Bowling for the week. You know, the people were really, really interested in Crown Green Bowls. And it'd be great to get some more more people involved. Uh, and just... I don't know, get some of the passion back. Get some of the passion of bowling back. It's it, That's what it seems to be lacking. Um, but, you know, I suppose at the minute... We'd just be happy to get playing balls again. Um, there's loads of comments on there um, from the various videos I've done this time. Most of them are all very complimentary. Um, and I think I've answered the main ones. I think I've got through the ones that are of interest and that will hopefully make you think a little bit and uh, just help you get through the weekend without any bowling I will be going watching at the Griffin there's bowling there Saturday and Sunday 11 o'clock start so I'm going to go over on Sunday I think not playing just to have a watch um, and then hopefully you'll join me on Monday uh, where we'll be going back to December 1980 to have a look at some of the stories that were in the pages of the Bowlers World back then very interesting very interesting I'm going to have some fun with that one so guys have a wonderful weekend stay safe obviously keep your masks on if you need to um, if you do go out watching some bowls you know stay safe keep your distance especially if you're near me and you're coughing and spluttering uh, have a great weekend and I'll catch you next week see you then Bye for now.